Hey guys, Palakik here, and this is the Scout 32. And this is a really big Scout 32. As with the smaller Scout, it uses an ESP32 cam to provide web-based controls and video streaming over a Wi-Fi connection. While my original Scout 32 design gets over large obstacles remarkably well for its size, it's still a bit limited by being so small, especially outdoors. So I decided to build a bigger one. How did I do this? Well, I basically just scaled the entire thing up by exactly two. The only thing I really needed to rework was the motor mounts. I have a version of the Scout designed to use N20 gear motors, and as luck would have it, these 370 sized gear motors are almost exactly twice the dimensions, just a bit more round. I was able to tweak some dimensions around, and the large motors fit perfectly. While I was at it, I decided to make a few other quality of life changes, including making a shelf mount for a USB-C style charge plug at the rear, as well as upgrading to full ball bearings on all the idler wheels. I just love how precise yet free the drivetrain feels now. To control the motors, I opted for some generic two-cell electronic speed controllers from Amazon. These take the same type of signal as a standard servo, so they work on the exact same standard Scout 32 code without modification. I believe these are designed for tank controls as they come in pairs, and the brake function can be easily disabled. Each controller includes a 1 amp 5 volt regulator, which is perfect for powering the ESP32, and to top it all off, they were also dirt cheap, costing only $12 for the pair of them. I'll have a link for these in the description, as I use them for a lot of projects, so maybe you can find a use for them too. I was able to find a battery that's the exact right size and shape to fit sideways inside of the chassis. Thanks to the surplus of room inside the new larger chassis, I opted to put the battery underneath the bed of the truck instead to make it look a little bit more streamlined. To charge the new battery while on the vehicle, I also used an off-the-shelf two-cell USB balance charger. I desoldered the USB-A plug and ran leader wires from my fancy chassis-mounted USB-C jack. This worked great and was a lot cheaper than some of the more purpose-built single-cell charger circuits I've used in the past. Thanks to the increased room in the cab, I decided to make a proper breakout board for the ESP32. I used some 40 by 60 millimeter perf board, and with all the extra room, I decided to make a dedicated LED driver circuit, so I didn't have to remove the stock LED. Pin GPIO4 is the same as the LED control pin, so I just tie into this, which lets me use both the stock LED and the external LEDs at the same time. Lastly, I wired up some pin headers to plug the speed controls into. After getting everything prepped, I just have to pop all the main parts together. My print bed is just a bit too small for the main chassis, so I designed it to glue together using 3mm steel rod to align and reinforce the mating parts. Additionally, all the optional colored body panels also glue to the cab. Just like the smaller Scout, with the exception of the axles, everything simply snaps together. If you thought the cab was hard getting on the smaller version, the XL version is definitely a very tight fit. Wow. The bed does go on a little bit easier, however. Like the original Scout 32, the weight balance is great for pulling itself up and over objects without flipping. The additional size and speed make it a lot more fun to drive, as you can cover so much more ground in the same amount of time, but it's still small enough to drive around most indoor areas without trouble. It's also perfect for carrying around your smaller Scout 32. To better accommodate the larger size, I also made some improvements to the code. I tweaked the sensitivity of the controls, so turns are a lot more controllable at high speeds, and I added some much needed fail safes. The increased size also means a lot more trouble if the Scout 32 has a runaway. The ESP32 still struggles a bit in areas with tons of interference, but I now added some code to detect a signal loss. Yep, that's right, the code now has such basic features as runaway protection. Wow, no longer does the scout wander off into the void anytime you lose signal, as there's now a watchdog that monitors the heartbeat signal from the web interface and detects when a disconnection occurs. I also finally updated certain code dependencies, so the software now compiles on the newest version of ESP32, which seemed to result in a better Wi-Fi performance and a higher camera frame rate. I still have some interference problems occasionally though. And then I realized that the ESP32 was using 40 MHz Wi-Fi channels by default. I have no clue why this is the default, as it's not like the ESP32 can even utilize the extra bandwidth. I manually set the channel to 20 MHz, and now it behaves much better around other wireless networks. The new code updates run just as well on the smaller Scout32 as my XL build, 
so I highly recommend updating to the newer version if you have experienced erratic performance in older builds. Finally, thanks to popular demand, I now added code support for the MX1508 motor driver. While I previously recommended using continuous rotation servos, the new code fork works with the MX1508 motor drivers or similar drivers such as the L298N to power N20 sized gear motors. It's nice not having to worry about dead zones and endpoints, such as with the ESCs or servos, which are notorious for drifting. It's also much faster, and I love how much quieter the N20 gear motors are versus the extremely loud servo motors. I built my own test rig to work out all the bugs. To simplify things a bit on this N20 build, I omitted the charger circuit and the LiPo, opting instead for a 9 volt battery. I run the MX1508 motor driver directly from the 9 volt with an additional 5 volt regulator to step down voltage for the ESP32. I was able to tape the motor driver to the back of the ESP32 along with the 5 volt regulator, so now all the electronics fit in the cab. For a cleaner look and to take advantage of the extra space in the rear, I even whipped up a special 9 volt battery clip to replace the stock bed. If you still want USB charging, there's also these fancy new 9 volt batteries that are actually just a 2 cell LiPo in disguise with a built in charger. I have links to these in the description and a manual for these batteries if you want to try them out for your own projects, as they are actually really cool and easy to implement. Whether it's the new Scout XL, or the updated code and chassis for the alternate motor drivers, I really feel I've improved the project in so many ways. While I still love how I can take my original size Scout anywhere, the new larger version feels a lot less like a toy and more like a proper hobby vehicle. It's somewhat similar to the size and specs of a Kyosho Blizzard. I even started getting carried away by adding scale details and painting the components to make it look a bit more like a scale replica. Maybe I'll take a few more cues from the Kyosho Blizzard and eventually add a plow for winter. This project has really grown way beyond my original scope over the years, and I hope that with all these new alternate versions, that there's even more opportunities for new builders to find a version that they want to build for themselves. Unfortunately, Thingiverse has been very unreliable for me lately, and the original project page for the Scout 32 became corrupted with my most recent uploads, so if you want to check out the project, please check the link in the description for my own site, pilothobbies.com, where I host all the files. I have a quick start manual included to get you started, and it covers a lot of the frequently asked questions. For everything else, I have a backlog of instructional videos that you can follow along to try building your own. If you want to help fund prototypes in future videos, I really appreciate you visiting my Amazon sponsored links in the description for parts and resources. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching and happy building.